Hello, I'm Enrique Sagese, and I'm a program manager with the Microsoft Purview product team. Today, I'm going to be talking about the data security part of the Zero Trust workshop that you will be delivering. Your role in delivering this workshop is about driving the evaluation of the customer's uh, sensitive information in their environment and uh, how to identify the different types of data assets and what kinds of protections need to be implemented for each of them. You should be able to provide during this workshop technical insights on the information protection technologies involved, including those in Microsoft Purview and the different data classification capabilities. During this workshop, you will be working with different stakeholders at the customer's organization. Which uh, stakeholders they are depends on the organization itself, because some organizations put these uh, responsibilities on the security teams. Others, they put them in the compliance parts of the organization. Others, they have them in the productivity departments. Whichever they are, it should be the people that are responsible for securing the company's information. Typically, information protection officers and architects and compliance officers and admins are the most engaged parts in this area and the ones that are more technically savvy and that will help you understand the customer's requirements. You will also want to work with the data platform administrators, those responsible for services like Exchange, SharePoint, and so on, because they are the ones that will explain the constraints of where the data is and how it's currently being managed. You want to include also data governance stakeholders and risk management stakeholders, as well as, if possible, higher up executives, including the CISO, if uh, they're available, and IT director or lead architect. Uh, those will provide also the direction and will, it's important that they're part of this conversation because they will help understand what can be done and what trade-offs are acceptable and also provide visibility to other executive roles of the work that's being done and why these decisions are being made. This workshop focuses on implementing protection of sensitive information under the Zero Trust umbrella. You might be wondering, how does the Zero Trust uh, principles align to the data layer? Let's talk about these principles. The first principle in Zero Trust is to verify explicitly. And what that means is that you need not to make assumptions. You need to make sure that uh, a user that's claiming to be the one that needs to access certain data, they are who they say they are, and that they do have access to that data. This is an area in which a technology like sensitivity labels comes in very handy because it can help you require that the user is authenticated and authorized before accessing sensitive data. You can check both the user's credentials and that the user has the necessary privileges to access this specific type of data before granting them access, and you can ensure that that happens regularly. You can also use audit logging technologies to monitor your environment and pinpoint potential malicious behavior, identify potential cases of abuse or misuse of data or improper sharing to understand the patterns and to be able to block malicious behavior before it becomes pervasive. The second principle in Zero Trust is to use least privileged access. And when it comes to data, what that means is that you need to use data classification technologies to identify different types of sensitive data and to minimize the access levels of different users to that data so people don't have standing access to information that they don't need to access. Of course, you want to avoid creating an obscure organization where no one has access to the data they need or no one knows what the others in their team are doing. But you want to make sure that if there is a particular piece of sensitive data that you would like to prevent being abused or misused, that only the people that have a requirement to access that data do so. The third principle in Zero Trust is to assume compromise. Assume that the worst will happen, that somebody will enter your company, somebody will grab a bunch of data, somebody will try to send it out. And this is where technologies like sensitivity labels come in again to help because you can ensure that even if that happens, even if somebody grabs a folder full of sensitive files and is able to send it out of the organization, those files are encrypted, they are still encrypted after exfiltration, and they still require users' credentials to access that data. So just grabbing the data and taking it out of the organization is not enough. You need to compromise the credentials. You need to be able to uh, continue impersonating those users and you need the data not of the exfiltration not to be detected so the data is not revoked and 
you cannot access or people cannot access the data after taking it out of the organization in an improper form. You can also use DLP technologies to prevent that from happening in the first place. You can say all data needs to be inspected, including encrypted data. It needs to be inspected before leaving the organization. And when it's inspected, if it contains sensitive information that should not leave the boundaries of the organization, or if it uh, can only go to specific locations, that policy is enforced. Finally, you can minimize the chances of this happening in the first place by using sensitivity labels, because if there is a compromised account, they won't be able to exfiltrate or access data to which they don't have access. Um, and uh, if a sensitive label says the regular user doesn't have access to the financial statements, for example, they won't be able to exfiltrate that data even if the account is compromised. You're going to be deploying this workshop in three main phases. The first phase is divided in two. The first one is know your data. You need to use different technologies available to understand what data is in the organization's uh, confines and what is critical, what is sensitive. You're going to use data classification technologies and labels and other uh, features to be able to understand what's important to the organization, what is sensitive, what is critical. Now, when it comes to data, companies don't have thousands of assets. They have billions of assets. You have every email, every document that was ever written, every version of those documents. And you will want, obviously, not to have to analyze each of them individually. What you will want to do is to identify classes of data. For example, documents with customer PII or intellectual property or M&A discussions. You will want to identify these classes, what they mean for the company, who should have access to this kind of information, and how it can be detected effectively and systematically. Then you will want to protect your data. This is the second part of the first phase. You will want to establish controls over each kind of data according to the classes that you defined in the first phase. You will want to say customer PII cannot be accessed by users outside of these departments or cannot be sent outside of the organization except with these or these uh, separate companies. Or you will want to establish boundaries for intellectual property so it doesn't leave the R&D department. You can also establish controls that say nobody needs to print or copy or share this kind of data. During phase two, you will be further tuning your data access. You will work on compartmentalizing your data as necessary. For example, there might be data assets that do not need to be accessed across the organization. You may have tented projects. You may have department with privileged data. You may have roles or executive roles that need to have access to special data that is not necessarily um, accessed or used by other people in the organization. You will also work to minimize unnecessary access by administrators to sensitive data. Administrators in the traditional world have access to everything. They are demigods in the organization that can do whatever they want with the data, and you don't want that to be the case. You want to say only these roles have access to all the data in the organization. Other roles only have access to specific data. Other roles can only see the existence of the data, but not the content itself, and so on. You will implement technologies like RBAC to make sure that that is containerized and properly uh, segmented so a regular administrator doesn't become a threat to the company. Finally, you want to monitor access to sensitive data. You want to identify those assets and establish monitoring principles through which if something gets shared, overshared, misused, you detect that as quickly as possible. During phase three, you're going to be identifying particularly sensitive data assets, such as the organization's intellectual property that could be considered the company's crown jewels, or VIP customer PII that you want to put a special focus on. For these assets, you may want to implement additional restrictions of the same kinds that you have implemented before, or even implement new technologies such as hold your own key that might make this data entirely opaque to the whole cloud and to anything outside of your organization, even if it's an authorized service. You may want to say these data assets is so restricted that only these few people can access it and it cannot be even used in the cloud services. In order to deliver this workshop effectively, there are certain technologies that you need to master. 
For starters, you need to understand how to detect sensitive data and classify. And for that, you're going to be using purview classifiers. You need to understand things like the standard classifiers and custom classifiers, such as those detecting uh, different types of international PII, like identity cards and things like that. And you should understand the capabilities in technologies like dictionaries and regular expressions. Now, you don't need to be a master of the regular expression language in order to be able to deliver this workshop. But you need to know what is possible and what is not by using this. You need to understand what kinds of patterns can be detected, how these technologies can be used in order to detect different types of sensitive data so you are aware of the limitations of these approaches. You will also want to understand trainable classifiers because these come in handy for a lot of organizations to detect things like intellectual property, business processes, specific types of organizational documents. For companies dealing with a lot of PAI, for example, customer PAI, employee PAI, executive PAI, etc., you will want to use exact data matching. And that's a particularly complex technology that you will also want to understand. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to know how to deploy it or master it, but you need to understand how it fits into the story, what its pros and cons are, what the complexity level is, and how to apply it in a real world environment, as well as which assets you need in order to be able to implement it. Finally, you will also want to be familiar with fingerprinting, which allows you to detect specific documents, even if they are slightly transformed or moved around. You want to track these documents and to be able to establish access control specific to any instance of the document around the organization. That's particularly important for special intellectual property documents and policies and things like that that you want to detect as they move around. You will also want to be familiar with sensitivity labeling and the differentiation between container labels and content labels and how content labels can be used to apply restrictions on documents and emails. Uh, technologies like encryption with Microsoft Information Protection and visual markings and dynamic watermarks and other technologies available as part of sensitive labels and also how these are applied manually or automatically to different kinds of assets. You might also want to become familiar with Bring Your Own Key because that's a technology that often is misunderstood and companies assume that they need it when in reality they don't. The benefits of Bring Your Own Key cannot be dismissed, but they are too re relevant to specific organizations and they have impact on specific scenarios. You, it's not a silver bullet that will solve all your security needs, so you need to understand what is the cost, what is the effort to deploy it, and what the real benefits are when you implement Bring Your Own Key in your organization. Depending on your organization, you might also want to consider things like hold your own key. Now, these technologies are so restrictive that they impose a significant cost on the company in usability and accessibility terms. For example, if you use hold your own key on a specific data, you can no longer use web apps, or you cannot see it in certain, web, uh, in certain mobile apps. So it's important that you understand the trade-offs and you are able to decide whether this technology applies to this organization, and if it does, to which kinds of data assets it needs to be applied. You don't want to use hold your own key for everything in the company or even everything that is sensitive. So you need to understand those trade-offs and how it, they impact things like productivity and accessibility. You will also want to be familiar with data loss prevention. And depending on the organization, you want to dig specifically into DLP in Exchange, DLP in SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, and Endpoint DLP and the different capabilities and how they all work together to ensure that your data cannot leak if it's identifiable via the classifiers that we discussed previously. You need to understand the dependencies, you need to understand the limitations, and also you need to understand how they play with other technologies such as sensitivity labeling. You will also want to become familiar with auditing tools. In particular, you should become very familiar with the unified audit log because that's where every action by every user and the presence of every piece of content is reflected. You will want to be able to use these technologies to do a proper assessment of the organization's data and to be able to identify what assets you want to protect. You can also use things like Content Explorer, the Content Explorer PowerShell commandlets, or Activity Explorer to help you identify these assets and understand how they are being used. Again, to deliver this workshop, you don't need to master these technologies to the point that you are able to successfully implement them end-to-end -end in the organization but you need to understand their scope, their constraints, their costs, their benefits, and their capabilities, so you are not making decisions based on false assumptions. During the workshop, you will be working, just with, as with the other modules, 
on a um, roadmap, and you're going to be using these different boxes that are going to be presented to you to identify guidance to execute the different steps. For example, you have to start with sensitive data discovery for the data layer. So you're going to click on the sensitive data dis discovery box, and that will take you to guidance on how to perform this sensitive data discovery, and what do you have to discover, and which technologies are available, and how to perform this task. Now, this will require that you launch a separate uh, activity, which is going to be detecting sensitive data. And you will work with the customer to define which technology you're going to use to identify the different data assets and what you need to look for and what level of detail you need. Once you have that data, you continue by uh, understanding how that sensitive data is shared or accessed by external parties, and also which existing controls exist, such as data governance rules, uh, data deletion policies, things like that, that are relevant to this pillar. You will want to identify different scenarios for sharing with customers, with partners, with executives, out within the organization, between different departments. Obviously, you don't want to do that at the individual file level, but you need to understand the patterns. You need to understand what is necessary and what's not. For example, do we ever share customer PII with external people? And if we do, with which organizations is this done? Or is this done with the specific people whose PII you're sharing? Do I ever share intellectual property? Do I have partner scenarios that are established? Are these known pre-established partners, or these come and go, and it might be random people, but according to a specific user, they need to gain access? Understanding these patterns is essential to execute this step. So you're going to go through each of these boxes and try to map these scenarios, understand the controls that are relevant to each step. In the second part of this uh, segment, or this phase, of no one protect your data, you're going to be implementing things such as sensitivity labeling and encryption and DLP to establish these boundaries that you defined in the first uh, part of this phase. In the second phase, you're going to be, as I discussed previously, managing data access. And this is where you will work with other teams, like the identity team, to establish privileged access management or set RBAC for the different roles that are uh, operational in the data security space. You will want to uh, set minimum standards for accessing data, for managing data, for managing these policies. And you want to segment or compartmentalize certain organizations according to administrative units to limit the scope of visibility of data rules and policies within the organization. For example, you might say that uh, data in the EU or policies in the EU can only be accessed or modified by an administrator that's part of the EU administrative unit. And finally, and this step is optional, it doesn't necessarily apply to all organizations, but in most companies you will have some critical data assets that you are particularly concerned about. Uh, as I said, examples are uh, secret formulas or um, undisclosed product information. And you will want to identify those and define what's the uh, risk mitigation plan. How are you going to constrain this data? Do you need to introduce things like double key encryption or hold your own key? Do you need to implement uh, things like bring your own key? Do you need to implement additional restrictions or policies? Do you need to further compartmentalize this data? So with this uh, step, you will be giving the final adjustment to your policies to make sure that even the most critical data assets are protected. After finishing this step, you are not done. You will want to reassess your data. Go back to step one, to phase one, and do the know your data again, but in the light of the new policies that you have established. Are there things that you missed? You, for example, will look for sensitive, sensitive data that you can identify that is not labeled. Uh, that might mean that you need to fine tune your policies and uh, run the process again. This is not something that you will want to do during the engagement. This is something that you will want to leave as a post-deployment task. You will want to say, we're done with this, but you will have to reassess after a few weeks, after your policies have been deployed, after your data has been protected, go back to the first step and review how your data is being protected and how it matches the sensitive uh, data assets that you have identified and the principles that you have established. After you have gone through the process, you will want to present your results. You will want to share the results of this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet contains the different steps through which you went and what actions were defined and what uh, tasks are planned. 
you will want to review those steps, you want to review the feedback, uh, get any additional feedback from the customer about um, the different uh, process, what's possible, what's not, what uh, gaps they identified, also about the workshop. You want to understand if this was useful, how it applies to them, and how the different technologies meet their needs, or where you have identified gaps that you want to pass back to Microsoft so we can work on enhancing our products based on that. And you will want to summarize the follow-ups, in particular, that follow-up about let's reassess our data and our stance after a few weeks of having deployed these technologies. So we can reassess whether this is enough or we need to define new additional technologies. You'll want to also establish an ongoing data security review in which you're going to want to define something like a um, biannual review of your security policies, your data policies, your labeling uh, principles, and your sensitive data assets. So you want to uh, verify that the zero trust principles are still being met by your current implementation. Please click on the link to learn more about the Zero Trust Workshop and have additional resources on how to deliver this workshop and the different technologies and how they map to the Zero Trust principles. And also, please join us in the next session about identity and Zero Trust. Thank you very much. Have a good day.